Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 13th edition of the Bus Drivers Are Out podcast with your host, me, Brian Cullen. So I'm certainly not making this an unlucky 13 because I had the chance to speak to Mr. Beautiful himself, Kenny Santucci, about the challenge and some rivals, too. We went back in some history to talk about some of his seasons. We talked about some of the changes that's happened to the challenge over the years, and we discussed whether or not he'd be back for a future challenge. So before I get to all that, let me just first remind all of you to follow me on Twitter at Bus Drivers Route. Go to my blog, busdriversroute.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel that you'll see at the bottom of the screen, I guess. So that way when I post all these interviews, they'll be sent directly to you. All right, so I think that's enough of an intro from me. So let me just get straight down to it. So here is Kenny. So uh, first things first, I got to ask, where have you been the past three seasons? Out and about, my man. Out and about. Um, they invited me to this one. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I guess it changed my heart. I really, I asked for, when was it? I think maybe two or three seasons ago. I just asked for more money, you know. it's You've been going at this thing for, shit, I've been on for like seven years, uh, eight seasons. You know, you don't want to, at some point you're like, hey, when are we going to get a raise here? You know, a mm-hmm. lot of people are so desperate for money out there, a- a.k.a. everybody on the show. Right. And, um, you know, they'll do it for, you know, pennies on the dollar. It's like ridiculous. So I was like, you know, I just want to make some money, you know. I'm here to mm-hmm. make some cash. I'm, You know, it's fun at first. You're, like, excited to be doing the show. And you're going away and all that. That whole aspect of it I'm kind of over with. Um, I just want to get paid and get out of there. Right, right. I mean, I can understand that. It's you have to put a little, if you're doing a job, you have to leave your job for a few months and go away and do this. So you definitely want to. Be yeah, and to that's it. and that's the hard part. You know, I was one of the only people who've ever had a real job on the show. You know, a lot of these guys um, don't do anything at home. You know, a lot of them talk a lot of shit about having uh, huge multi-million dollar businesses at home, aka retards <laughs> like that kid West. Right. Um, but nobody's got anything going on. You know. Nobody's got anything going on. So it's like, you know, I'm signed with agencies here in New York. I have a full-time job here in New York. Um, before I was working in New York, I worked for a company in Jersey. Where it was like, it was hard to take off every once in a while. Right. Um, yeah. Or at least six, seven weeks on end. So it's like when I left, it was a big deal. You know, when these people leave, it's like, oh, I didn't get shit else going on, so let me go. Yeah. So when you first uh, joined the challenge, it was 2006, which is kind of like another lifetime ago in terms of challenge years. So what do you think has changed most from the show from then until now? You know what, dude? Just the the overall fun aspect of it. You know, when I first came on, um, I remember Fresh Meat 1, me, Theo, Wes, Evan, Derek, like taking a cab into town and just like having a good time on like a Tuesday or Wednesday night. You're in a foreign country, you know. You could, we could have pretty much done what we wanted to. A lot, most people you know, stayed in the house and hung out there. And it's like, you know, there was always liquor on hand and you could do what you wanted. Now it's just like, it's run like a prison. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like you got to be in bed by a certain time. You know, you have to get up when they say so. You have to leave when they say so. It's just like, I'm 30 years old. I really don't want to be told what to do every minute of my life. Plus it's like, you have no internet access. You have no television. You have no phone. It's like, they pigeonhole you to doing nothing but that shell. You know, right. and eventually you got to be like, I, I give up, can't do this anymore. It's fun. This is your 20s, man. I, I couldn't picture doing anything more fun. You know, I got to win a ton of cash. I got to go to all over the world. But at the same time, you're like, what am I doing here? You know, you get to a point where you're like, this, it's a dead end. It really mm-hmm. is. For me, one of the things that I've noticed has changed most is kind of MTV's tolerance for fighting. It seemed like back in the day, like when people would, push each other or have any type of screen match, like production would immediately jump in, separate everyone, and maybe even send people home. But now even like with yeah. this season with Frank and CT and Knight and Marlon, it seems like they're a lot more lenient with what they allow. Well, well that's, think, that's there what... Been, yeah, yeah, has there been like a change in the what, contract or whatever? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been on one in uh, like, what, two years now? Um, yeah. But, you know, there's been times where it's like people got pushed or slapped or something like that, and they send them home. Now it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I saw that first episode of Rivals 2, and it's like, CT smacking this guy in the face. I'm like, wow, they have gotten pretty tolerant, you know? And so wh- I don't understand why the other guy's letting him hit him. Yeah. Like, that was a perfect chance to be like, all right, you know, he hit me first. It's evident. Why don't you go after him? But I don't get that. So you lose a little respect for people you don't even know when you're like, well, you're letting another man smack you in the face, and you're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. 
Do you think it's that. yeah? Do you think it's all just like MTV trying to go down the bad girls club uh, way, or do you think contestants are actually complaining like they don't want to be sent home for this? I don't know. You know what? A lot of it relies on the fact that you know they just flew. They spend so much money flying you out there. Um, you know, they get you there, and now it's like, all right, now we got to find two other teams that make sense. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes the game format doesn't allow them to replace people so easily. But you know, you look at Rivals One, where uh, what's that kid's name? Adam yeah. punched Ty in the face, and it wasn't even like punch in the face. It's like you reach over somebody, punch him in the top of the head, and they sent him home. Bang! Mm-hmm. No questions asked. They got rid of him. But it's like. CT's whacking this guy in the face in this last one, and they're allowing him to do it. So, I don't know. I don't it, know almost seems, yeah, it almost seems like, based on their own personal storyline, they can decide whether they want to send someone home or not. Which yeah, I think they have, they they have a lot of bank. Of, well, they have a lot of investment in CT being on this challenge, you know, mm-hmm. mainly with him being with Wes and DM being there. So, it's like, all right, well, if they get rid of him, now there goes the whole storyline. It's like the whole thing with him and Davis. Nobody even saw him punch Davis on the Inferno 3, but, like, that night, executive producer came in the room and was like, you're out of here. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess the shiner on his face was evident enough, but... Mm-hmm. So another thing I've noticed has changed is, I remember even just like a few years ago, just the, like the prizes for winning challenges used to be like a lot more extravagant. Now they win like a few hundred bucks. Is that just based purely on like budget cuts and stuff like that? Like, have you all noticed like the prizes now? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like the, I feel like the challenge is bigger now than it's been in the last, probably since I've been on them anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I remember being on the duel and they gave away a motorcycle and I've been on one, you know, Fresh Me too. I got golf clubs and a mountain bike and all types of a guitar, you know, with an yeah. amp and stuff. It's like they used to have like cool prizes. Now it's, there's no prizes. And then after they got rid of the prizes, they started to give away cash every challenge, mm-hmm. and they got rid of that too. So it's like, it's stupid. It's I, Maybe it is budget cuts. Buna Murray is such a weird company. You know, you'll never get anything out of them. They're such right. a, I don't know, strange group over there. Nothing makes sense. Like, there's no rhyme or reason. You think about any other show or any other company. You think, Let's take Bravo, for instance. Right. They have successful characters, and they run with them. They're like, oh, we'll put them on another show, or we'll give them their own show, or we'll you know, kind of brand ourselves with them, you know, the people mm-hmm. who do well. Um, even with MTV, it's like, you know, people loved Paul E.D., so they gave him his own show. He didn't do too well, but they gave him his own show, Paul and Sno- uh, Snooki and Jay Well, It's like, I feel like that's the, the wave and the, the current of how it's supposed to go. With Buna Murray, it's like, look how many people have come and gone on the challenges and, like, nobody did anything. And now the only people who become successful from the from the challenges are the people who left the challenge behind and then went on to do something else. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to completely leave it behind and never do it again and never be associated with it to do anything remotely successful. It's like, you know, Miz wasn't seen for years. You know, he went on and has a great career in WWE. Uh, Jing Chung... You know, there's some people who have survived this storm. We call it challenge. But, Mm -hmm. you know, most people, you're never going to be doing 10, 15 challenges. I mean, look at most of us, me, Johnny, CT, we're we're 10 deep. You know, and where are we? We're we're at the same place we were when we started. So. Have you tried going up to Munimari, trying to try to pitch, like, some type of spinoff with just you you and Johnny and stuff? Well, you know, we tried that years ago, and I actually, you know, they – there's a couple of people in the production team or like freelance people that they hire that are great. You know, I love a lot of people over there. Um, and, you know, kind of threw ideas at them. You know, me and Evan had shot commercials with them and I did a commercial with Wes. I mean, they've kept me busy. They've had me do a ton of stuff in the past, but nothing substantial, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we've, tried, we've tried that avenue. Uh, okay. So the ch- but that's when the show was doing better. I mean, now it's like... No, you yeah, know now it's kind of uh, always on a year-to-year thing, so it's weird that they wouldn't try and do more things to promote it. But, yeah. Uh, so with the challenge now trying to be becoming more athletic and trying to become like an actual sport, do you think that there is a, a PED issue within the challenge? You know what it is? They can't really be a sport because when you invite people back or – like, everybody's like, oh, this new wave of guys, like the Zacks and this guy and that guy. It's like, they're all like, oh, well, we're the new wave. It's like, well, the old wave was never bumped out. 
So you mm-hmm. can't say, oh, hey, I'm the champ without beating the, the, the current one, you know? Can't say, like, oh, like when they were coming on, it's like, I haven't been on in a while, but Johnny. Johnny's won the last two or three that he did, you know. One Rivals won, then he won uh, Battle of the X's. You know, he's on this new one. So it's like, until somebody beats him, I feel like nobody should be like, especially guys who got sent home early or get sent home and whatever, like, you know, I somebody sent me a video of night and all these retards sitting around talking about X, Y, and Z, and it's like, well, none of you have ever done anything yet. It's mm-hmm. like your your second challenge, it's like, we didn't start talking shit until we started winning. So until right. you guys start winning, then you could start talking shit, you know? But that's my thing. It's like nothing's consistent. Like it should, it should play out like a story. You know, every season, you know, I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead. If I'm watching season three, and then when season four comes on, there's a totally new cast in a totally new place. I'm going to be like, wait, what the hell happened? This makes no sense, you know? So having some consistency with it, I think, would make more sense and would make the show more believable as a sport. And when you play a sport, you know, it shouldn't have so many, like, unwritten rules. You know, there's a lot of rules that are thrown in there at the last minute well it's like oh well you didn't uh reattach your carabiner so you lose and it's like wait hold on you know i i lost rivals one Be- we beat johnny and tyler up the mountain by 45 minutes and then when we get up there now we get instead of a 45 minute um lead you know they give us only a two minute lead because obviously it wasn't dramatic yeah. enough for them mm-hmm. so it's like come on are you bullshitting me i go i just carried this idiot all this weight did all this shit, and here you are, you're going to tell me we lost because you're changing the rule? You know, it's like, to me, that's stupid. You know, that, like a sport is consistent. It's, it, there's rules and regulations to it. With this, it's like, all right, whatever, whatever's up the executive producer's ass that day, that's what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Do you think, though, that some of the new people are using, like, steroids and stuff to gain an edge when they jump in on this, or even some of the old people who try to hang on? I mean, I think there are some old people who use steroids. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you don't have freakouts like over glass getting spilled in the fucking water because, or, you know, glass falling into the water because you're you're normal or you're yeah. not on something. Um, so, I, I mean, do people use shit? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been a buck 95 since I've been in, I'm about a buck 80 now, but, you know, since I've been in, out of high school, out of college, and I've always been consistently the same weight, whether I train really hard I, or whatever I do, I kind of float between a 10-pound, uh, you know, 85 to 95-pound block there. But most of these guys, yeah, they when they show up and they're 165 pounds one season and then 205 the next, you're like, wait, what have you been doing in the off season? Somebody, they must, like, do they somebody must introduce that? you to a really good pharmacist. What? Do they do they have any type of testing before the season for that? No. I supposedly supposedly in the last couple they've had like psych uh psychiatric uh or psychiatrist testing, you know mm. certain people or everybody for that matter. Um but I don't know. I I've, I've never been tested for anything. You know, okay. aside from like, you know, when we first started they give you like an S T D test and all that bullshit, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um they're, they're not testing for steroids or for, uh, you know, who's crazier. Now, I, I really feel like most of the people on the show are nuts. Yeah. You know? right. Seems that way. Sometimes I'm like, wow, how did I make it on here? Mm-hmm. must be crazier than I thought. Yeah. So, actually, I spoke to Johnny Bananas last week, and I asked him this question. and he gave Great me interview, the... by the way. Oh, thank Great you interview. very much. I appreciate it. So, he gave me the idea of alliances. So, I was wondering if you yes. had any type of idea for a new format. Uh, for a show going in the future? Um, I don't know. I mean, we've always had something. Like, we've been talking about it for years, uh, having a draft or having, you know, why don't you just team up the people who naturally gravitate towards each other, mm-hmm. you know? Um, you know, me, Johnny, Derek, Evan, we've always been pretty close. We got a lot, you know, every show we've ever done, we've always worked together. So when people are like, oh, alliance, 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 it's like, Hold on. These are naturally the guys I hang out with. I consider them my friends on and off the show. I've been to Derek's house. I've been to Johnny's house. I've been, you know, me and Evan are, live in New York. I mean, you know, we're those are the guys that I bullshit with on a daily basis, so I don't see it as much of an alliance. You know, those are the guys that 
I'm with all the time anyway. So why would I go on a show and team up with somebody I don't know? That would be an alliance. That would be like, oh, my God, I'm working with this guy to get to point A or point B. That would be the alliance. So, I mean, I think having a draft or having something where, like, okay, Johnny's team captain since he's won X amount of challenges and he could call up whoever he wants uh, to build a team. You know, he needs four guys and four girls or whatever the case may be. And uh, do a show that way, you know, and see who could pull in their, uh, you know, their friends or the people they align themselves with. But, you know, you look at some people who have been doing shows forever and it's like they don't really have any friends and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're always on the outside looking in for a reason. Yeah, yeah, So, One of the dynamics in the house that I always find amusing personally is when veterans kind of look down upon rookies and stuff like that. So, I don't, I don't, listen, my thing is like when veterans, like, I feel like the girls are the ones who cause a lot of that. Like, yeah, oh, you're a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're rookies. You guys got to sleep in this room. You're, it's like, all right, who gives a shit who's a rookie? Who's a, I've been here eight seasons. I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm just as pathetic as the guy coming in for the first season. You know, I, what's it make me better? That I'm a bigger idiot for being here eight seasons. So we're in the same boat as the rookies, you know. I have, if a guy comes on, you know, when um, – I'm trying to think. Like when Leroy and Mike came on, it's like we accepted them with open arms. They stayed in our room. I love Leroy. I love Mike. I mean, I think they're both great guys. I've never looked down upon them like, oh, they're rookies. You know, it's like, oh, no. I don't look at it that way. It's like, are they not as close? Or like we got along with them, but, you know, and it was understood and they got that, that – you know, they were hanging out with us. We didn't really know them as well as Evan and Johnny. You know, I, I didn't know them as well as Evan and Johnny. So when it came down to it, if I had a vote against them, I would. You know, that's a natural progression at a game. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like I don't treat anybody differently because they're new. Yeah, it seems like some of the quote-unquote veterans try to just use that as like an excuse to put someone in rather than putting themselves on the chopping block because it kind of... Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, and, and this is another point of the game that's always uh, always debated, um, getting put on the chopping block. Okay, the name of the game is to get to the end and make some money. All right? mm-hmm. You're not sending me to Nicaragua or Panama or South Africa to go and like, oh, I'm going to spend a couple of days here and fuck around and maybe hope to get some money. No. I'm there to get to the end and make some money, period, the end. I don't give a shit what anybody says, okay? And that's why everybody's there. Some people, I'm glad they have this alternate route where they're saying, oh, hey, I'm just going to go and hang out and have a good time and maybe get laid and have a couple of drinks. Now, I could give a shit about getting laid out there or having drinks with any of these people. It's like, send me there. I want to make some money and I want to get home. And if I could get to the end with all my friends and we're going to make some money, then afterwards we'll hang out and party and shit. Other than that, Send me the fuck home or don't even invite me if the goal isn't to make some money at the end of the trip. Mm-hmm. Um, in the beginning, was it fun? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the only reason. That's how rookies are a little bit different where they come on and they're like, oh, my God, it's such a good time. Let's go get wasted and have a good time. Go do that. That's not my That's not my cup of tea. So between the two rival seasons now, it seems like the one pair that never or that really did hate each other was you and Wes going back to the first rival season. So yeah. what makes Wes so hated, I guess would be the word, amongst everyone? Amongst everyone? Or I mean, I, just, you. I, could, I could give you a million reasons. I mean, there's a reason why everybody hates him and everybody treats him like an asshole. I mean, he's just a shameless idiot. You know, he comes on there and talks about his businesses and how he's making millions of dollars. For instance, here, look at every season he's done um, on a whole. When he comes on and he gets sent home early, his excuse is, oh, I have stuff going on at home. i got to get home. All right? If he makes it to the end, he's like, well, I came here to make money and I had to do what I had to do to win and blah, blah, blah. It's His whole philosophy, his whole life is shameless. You know, he'll make up excuses. He has no problem lying about whatever s- scenario or story he wants to put together. Um, you know, just a coward talks a lot of shit behind closed doors, and then when it comes face-to-face, he wants to kiss your ass. So I, I, you can't really have much respect for a guy like that. Um, you know, I just don't – there's there's not, near one quality about the guy that I like. No. 
No, so I guess you two and I, and, and I feel like, and everybody feels the same way. It's like, you know, I got called, uh, I don't want to blow up anybody's spot, but somebody called me the other day um, just chatting about the new show and saying that they, you know, they were like, oh, we missed you, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, yo, man, I get it now. You know, I know why you hate him so much. He said this, he said that, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they obviously had, you know, it'll probably unfold on the show and you guys can make sense of it, whoever you want. But uh, they were telling me that they got into an argument with them on the show and they were like, I hate the guy. I think he's such a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I've been, I've been saying that since day one. You know, would I like to kick his ass? 1,000%. You know, the only reason I don't is there's laws in place that uh, protect yeah, that. assholes like that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what's his partner this season, uh, CT? W- what are your thoughts on on him in general? In general, yeah. I mean he's just a he's just a weird guy. It's so, like I go back and forth about how I feel about this guy because um, and it was like oh you're always hating on him. It's like not that I don't hate on him. It's like I, he could be one of the guys. He could be like you know hang out with all the guys and stuff. But he's he's just so weird sometimes. You know you never know which guy you're going to get. I feel like he's just a schizo. It's like Johnny came back from uh, Battle of X and was like, he's like, yo, he's so cool. I hung out with him the whole time, blah, blah, blah. We had such a good time. That, like, you know, they would play video games online together or whatever the hell those two weirdos would do. But, um, you know, you get that side of it. And then it's like Johnny tells me about how they come on this next season and he's trying to throw him in. So when CT was in New York with us, we all hung out, we got along, everything was perfect. Like, he called me up, we did that Restore the Shore thing after Sandy, me mm-hmm. and him went out for drinks, we hung out. Cool guy, you know, talking about, you know, he's like, next one, I think we should all band together, blah, blah, blah. He's like, me and Johnny saw eye to eye, we got along. And then on this one, he's trying to throw Johnny in the first round. So it's like, I don't get a guy, I, like, I don't get him. You know, I don't get that. It's like, one minute you're talking, hey, let's all band together and hang out. And I'm like, fine with that. I, I, it's not that I dislike the guy, you know. I think he's funny as shit. Like, I've hung out with him a bunch of times. He's funny. He could be cool. I saw him in L.A., what, maybe two, three weeks ago. I hung out with him. We had a great time. He's a he's a cool guy. He's a good guy to hang out with. But then you never – but the next time you see him, you don't know who you're going to get. You might get that schizo wacko who, you know – you can't make heads or tails of. He's to eat he cracked out of his mind. He's drunk. He's acting like an idiot. And it's like, all right, who the hell wants to be around that? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's my thing with him. Great athlete. You know, could be a fun guy. If he was consistently fun, then that, then I'd say, oh, yeah, he's one of my buddies. But, you know, I never know who I'm going to get. You know, when I see him in L.A., he's like, hey, man, how we doing, blah, blah, hanging out. And then it's like I see what – and, you know, Johnny's one of my good friends. So it's like when I see him go on the show and it's like – him plotting against him, it's like, wait, why are you, why are you trying to throw him in? I don't, like, I can't make heads or tails of the guy, so you can't really be friends with somebody you really can't trust, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, as a, I'm kind of really curious about your answer on this. As the person who picked Laurel in your in the Fresh Meat Two season, who do you think yeah. would win in a one-on-one elimination, her or Emily? Oh shit, dude. I mean, it seems like dude, those I, are the clear two best female athletes. Right yeah, now. I mean, Laurel, Laurel's just uh, a natural athlete. You know, she's she's good at most things, you know. Mm. She's not afraid of a lot of things. But on the other hand, you know, I've been doing CrossFit for about a year and a half now. And, you know, Emily could, as as far as the CrossFit world goes, which are, you know, in my opinion, the most fit people I know, you know, in the CrossFit community that I'm banned with, mm-hmm. um, she could hang with the best of them. You know, she's an athlete. Like, she's proven herself time and time again. I've never done a show with Emily, um, but... You know, from what I see and what she's done, she's a f- unbelievable, unbelievable in any aspect. I mean, even I know she. Everybody's like, oh, she can't swim that well, but you know, the CrossFit nature and the CrossFit you know code. It's pretty much work on your weaknesses, and that's what she does. You know, I've seen her Instagram pictures. She's working in the pool, so I wouldn't put too many people up against Emily. So I mean, Laurel's good, but she no Emily. I mean, from okay. what I could see, anyway. Yeah. But I mean, could there be other things that Laurel might beat her at? Sure. So, kind of on the on the guy side, if you had to bet on one person to win elimination and bet against one person to win elimination, who would they be? Oh my God, it's a no-brainer. What is this current cast? Uh yeah, we can do this current cast. Uh, I I don't know who's gone, who's left already, but I mean, from you what do I just, saw, yeah, whoever was on. 
when I when I first yeah when I did that uh, intro show the uh, the launch special, ah oh, God I mean, no I actually did watch the first episode. You know I had to watch the first episode. Uh, I did that thing online for that, and yeah, I actually for the first time felt really bad for Tyree because he is consistently the first or second guy sent home every time, all the time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's just a space filler, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I actually thought he could have won. And I forget who he went up against. And I'm like, oh, my God, he could have won that. So I guess Dunbar would have to be the guy I would say is going to lose consistently time and time again. Like, he's never won. Yeah. Like, he is. And I feel like Tyree, that was... Tyrese to win, and he lost it because of Dunbar. So um, I would say Dunbar to lose, to win. Um, God, uh, either Johnny or CT, because Johnny um, Johnny has lost a couple, but I've seen him win some of the hardest ones. You know, some of the when his back's up against the wall, the guy pulls out wins. So he is consistently the one who wins. I never really see. CT go in. I mean, the last couple of times he did go in, he got sent home. So yeah, you know. So I would say Johnny. I'd have to go Johnny. Okay. So over your uh, challenge history now, if you could pick one moment that is your shining star, what would it be? Oh, well, you know the answer for this, man. Come on, you're you're a big fan of the show. Um, I so think fresh meat. So. <laughs> fresh meat. Fresh meat too was. Uh, I feel the best about when I look back. I'm like, wow, I was consistently winning. You know, the ent- I loved having the odds against me, and the entire house was against me, and I ended up making it to the end. If I would have won, it would have probably been my favorite challenge ever. Um, but, you know, we lost. I mean, Landon's a, a freak. He's another one who's just an unbelievable athlete. Um, yeah, the way you turned that season but, around was a stroke of genius. It was incredible. Yeah, and everybody's like, oh, well, it's because you had Laurel. I'm like, no, I played the game smart there. There was a couple of times where it's like I made – you know, I wanted West to admit that, like, he was throwing his, quote-unquote, alliance into the, you know, everybody he had to deal with, he he turned on. Mm-hmm. So it just shows you what type of guy. And the, the fact that people still make deals with him, I mean, I don't feel bad for them because they're stupid. It's like, I made him do that for a reason. Um, so, and then I even put myself in for, like, Jill and Frank. So I think, uh, Jill and um, Pete. So... You know, all in all, I think that was probably my best season, my shining moment. I mean, not too many other guys, I think, could have carried somebody else up the mountains. Absolutely. And not, and not even that moment, but the fact that, you know, and they don't even capture it. That was literally 15 hours of, you know, working out and exhausting, yeah. stupid little challenges. And I, I never thought I was going to pass out more when I was carrying the wheelbarrows, when we were pushing those wheelbarrows back and forth. I did that twice by myself. Like, literally, like, sat there and watched me do it. I'm like, the whole time I'm badgering the shit out of him, you know, because yeah. I'm just telling him what a pathetic human being he is. But at the same time, it's like I'm moving real battle and real battle. And, you know, uh, Tyler and Johnny are switching off each one, and Mike and Leroy are switching off each one, and I did every one of them. And then I ate all the food, and I carried them up the mountain, and there was a puzzle at the top that they never even show. So he talks about, you know, he's, he's laying there, he's like, I can't help, and blah, blah, blah. I sat there and did the entire puzzle, not only by myself, but quicker than anybody else. Then when we get to the top of the mountain, it's like I let him sleep the whole time and stood on the rock. It's like, yeah, you know, I, 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 Rivals 1 was uh, a bitch of a season for the simple fact that, yeah, I did fall off that thing, you know, and I couldn't climb that rope. So those were my two flaws. And did Wes win that for us? Yes, I'll give him that. However, if you go back and watch, the first elimination, he stepped over the line. Okay? You know, mm-hmm. they, they show that. He stepped over the line, so that was DQ the first time. And when we went into the first elimination, Davis plowed him over twice. It was me beating Tyree that saved us that first time. But I'll get no credit for that. All right? And everybody, like, somebody tweeted me the other day. They are like, wow, you really steamrolled Tyree because every time it was me knocking him over, not uh, Wes doing anything. I was like, I gave him Davis for a reason. I go, you take the smaller guy, I'll take him, and, you know, and Tyree's a big guy. I mean, he's a shit athlete, but a big guy. Um, but, you know, I get no credit for that. It's only like they'll remember you for what you did wrong. Um, and then if he wasn't on my team, he would have been sent home first like he was on the last six. 
But the fact that he was with me was the only thing that got him to the end. The, the first time he saw a finish line in seven challenges. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So. So I enjoyed your uh, pre-show before the season with your with going through past highlights. But did Snooky really have to be there? I like, I don't know. I mean, that's not my call. I mean, I wish I could hire and fire whoever I wanted. Yeah. But uh, I'm like, I, I was. You know, she came on she was good. I thought I thought she came across pretty good. I I think they uh they threw her in there to see how she would uh how she would fend. Um I thought she did all right. You know. Yeah. Is that what I, mean, I always thought they should have done a challenge of challengers versus Jersey Shore when Jersey Shore was at its apex. I thought that would have been a, a big time money maker. I don't know why they never went they down would, that road. Do you, well, Bune and Murray would never go for it because the Jersey Shore would probably demand their own house and make a hundred thousand dollars and here we are only fighting for forty. So that would make yeah, no yeah. sense. You know, they're, they make they make a lot more than anybody on the challenge has ever done. You know, yeah. I, I know Vinny and Mike are driving around in Ferraris and shit, and I think I'm still I still think that most of the people I know uh, on the challenge are still renting at their parents' house. So yeah, definitely a different uh, dynamic Jersey Shore in the challenge universe. Yeah, I mean I don't think any of them are great. I think a lot of the people who are on the challenges trained for the most part. You know, I know Johnny works right. out a lot. I know C T does. Um you know, the guys in the Jersey Shore work out, but I couldn't see them doing anything but, you know, global gym style stuff. Right. Yeah. So. Right, so, t- so tell me a little bit about uh your company stuff, yeah. I know right now you're promoting the Johnny Bonabel heads and stuff, but I know you have a lot of other stuff on there. Um yeah, well no, I just I I leave it up just for people who are big fans of the show, want to get T shirts and stuff. Um, you know, Johnny reached out to me and he's like, oh, we got the bobbleheads, you know, you want to throw them up there for us. And then he wanted a T-shirt, so we threw that up there. So, I mean, it's, I should call it the Johnny Banana site because, you know, we do move a lot of his product and people are loving it. Um, but, it, yeah, it's just a housing site, just to, you know, people from the show want to sell some stuff or I have my own T-shirts. Um, it's not a big deal. It's more of a, like a fun project that I do. You know, I right. make a little cash from it here and there, but... For the most part, it's a buddy of mine and me um, and Evan started it years ago, and we were just kind of doing it for fun. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's still what it is. Okay, cool. So just, uh, where can people follow you on Twitter, all that stuff, anything else you need to promote? Um, no. No, I'm good, man. Uh, at Kenny Santucci for Instagram or Twitter. And, um, yeah, that's about it. That's all I got, man. All right, great. Well, uh, hopefully you and MTV can come to some settlement because I really want to see you on a challenge next season. You've been, you've oh, been I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know if I got any more in me. I think I'm uh, officially retired. But if I if I come back, if the price is right, I'll come back for sure. All right. Fair enough. Hope Hi, to buddy. See you soon. But thanks, thanks for yeah. coming on. Appreciate it. No, thank you, man. Pleasure. Have, you, have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye. There it is. The 13th edition of the Bus Drivers Rock podcast is in the books. Hope you all enjoyed hearing from one of the best challengers out there, Kenny. I think he gave a lot of good insights into the challenge as a whole and what to expect going forward. That'll just about do it for me. Let me just once again remind you, follow me on Twitter at Bus Drivers Route. Go to BusDriversRoute.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So whenever I post these videos of the interviews I do, they'll be sent directly to you. All right, so that'll do it for me. So until next time, have a good one.